Hello everyone, you are watching The Name of Jesus, Jesus Zeus Connection Debunked, and more. In this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the idea that Jesus' name comes from the pretend uh, Greek god that was called Zeus. Um, on YouTube, there are, are several videos that uh, claim that uh, the name Jesus, as we see it in English, like here, uh, actually comes from the name Zeus, which is shown in English here. Now, obviously, I'm opposed to this idea, and there's a lot of reasons to be opposed to this idea, uh, and that is what I'm going to talk about in this video. The letters that make up Jesus' name and the name Zeus are different. The Greek letter that turns into a Z in Zeus is the sixth letter of the Greek alphabet. That letter is called Zeta. The Greek letter that turns into an S in Jesus, twice, is the 18th letter of the Greek alphabet. That letter is called Sigma. Further, Jesus in Greek is spelled Iesus. Uh, uh, this letter is, the I-looking letter is Yoda, this is Eta, this is Sigma, this, oops, this is Omicron, this is Upsilon, and then the last one is just another form of Sigma. So this is one form, this is another form, same letter, and it's pronounced Iesus. But Zeus in Greek is spelled Zephs, Zeta, Epsilon, Upsilon, and then uh, final Sigma. So you can see that Zeta in Greek is a completely different letter than this, though of course this is capital, uh, the Zeta is, um, but there's a lot more reasons to that to believe what I'm saying, but we'll go over it as, as I go. There is no connection. So when you compare Zeus in English with Jesus in English, completely different. Z, S, completely different. When you compare it in Greek, Jesus, Iesus, or in English characters, but the Greek word, Iesus, and the name Zeus in Greek, Zephs, completely different. This is a different letter than this. And um, there's a lot of other differences too, but I'll, as I said, I'll address it as I go. The names Jesus and Zeus might sound somewhat similar in English, but even in English, you can see the difference. Z compared to S, and in Greek, Omicron Upsilon Sigma, or Us compared to Epsilon Upsilon Sigma, or Fs. So that is talking about uh, the end of the word here. See, E-U-S, which transliterates uh, from Greek into English, the end of the word would be E-U-S, as shown here and here, um, compared to O-U-S, the transliteration from the Greek word into uh, English characters, the word um, ends in O-U-S, the last three letters of the word, I should say. Completely different. O-U-S, not the same EU as E-U-S. That was the simple answer. It's almost good enough by itself to show that the name Jesus has nothing to do with the name Zeus. But proponents for this idea might still object, and they also make other claims. So let's go over what they claim. Jesus comes from Zeus claims. Jesus' name comes from Zeus because the names sound similar. Uh, you might notice that I have numbers here. Uh, this represents that this is uh, the, a top level um, title or topic. This is uh, a sub two is below one, and then below two you'll see three, and so on, so that you can kind of see the flow of the document. I decided to add that in. So... Uh, now you know. Some people connect the somewhat similar sounding name of Jesus with the name Zeus. The thing is, even in English, it doesn't really sound the same. When we pronounce Jesus in English, we pronounce it Jesus or Jesus. Jesus. Only if you slur the word does it sound like Zeus. So Jesus sounds like Zeus. But does that matter? 
we can slur bud and good to make them sound similar too. Bood, good. But if that's not how they're supposed to be pronounced, or even how they're normally pronounced, then where's the connection? You may be wondering about Greek. The, name, the names Jesus and Zeus are both supposed to be Greek words, right? So what do they sound like in Greek? That is a good question. In this chart, I show three different pronunciations. There is modern Greek pronunciation, biblical Greek pronunciation, and classical Greek pronunciation. Um, in the first column, modern Greek pronunciation, you will see um, the modern Greek pronunciation of Jesus in Greek at the top, and then uh, just below that in the same uh, field, then you will see the spelling. So this is the pronunciation, this is the spelling within parentheses in Greek characters. Um, this is the spelling of Zeus, or pronunciation of Zeus, and this is the spelling of Zeus in Greek characters. So this is modern Greek, this column, this is biblical Greek, this is classical Greek. In modern Greek, which obviously is how they pronounce it nowadays, Jesus would be pronounced Isus, Isus, with the accent on Zeus, not Isus, but Isus, and Zeus would be pronounced Zephs. In Biblical Greek, which is how uh, Paul would have spoken uh, Greek, uh, it was Biblical Greek is also called uh, Koine Greek um, or uh, Hellenistic Greek, which Hellenistic has no, no connection at all to the word hell. It uh, has to do with Greek, um, but that's it's, it's a Greek way of saying Greek. So uh, in Biblical Greek, Jesus would have been pronounced Iesus. Iesus. Again, the accent is on Zeus. Zeus would have been pronounced the same way as it is in modern Greek, Zephs. In classical Greek, which is um, like Homer's time, uh, Plato's time, things like that a long time ago, uh, Jesus would have been pronounced Iesus, Iesus, with the accent on Zeus. Iesus, Iesus. Zeus would have been pronounced uh, different, and it's kind of hard for me to pronounce it, uh, it's Zeus, Zeus, or something something like that. Uh, the epsilon makes an S sound, and then the upsilon, or shown here, upsilon makes a, a U sound, I believe, and you're supposed to um, glide them together. It's ew, ew, Zeus, something like that. So you can see Iesus, Zephs, Iesus, Zephs, for Biblical Greek, Modern Greek, Classical Greek, Iesus, and Zeus. In the chart above, you can see the way the names Jesus and Zeus are pronounced in modern times, how they were pronounced in New Testament times, Biblical Greek, and how they were pronounced in Greece's classical times. Not only are the names Jesus and Zeus spelled differently, as you can see here, now notice they're always spelled the same way no matter which pronunciation system you use. It's not, the, it's not the names Jesus and Zeus that changed, it's just the way that they were pronounced. They were still spelled exactly the same. Actually, um, well, I'll get, I'll get to that in a second. Um, not only are the names Jesus and Zeus spelled differently, as you can see here, comparing them, uh, they also sound different in Greek. Out of the three pronunciation systems, the classical pronunciation of the names sounds the closest. But the Greek form of the name Jesus wouldn't have been around until Alexander the Great conquered much of the world, which was after Greece's classical times. So, even if this could have been a foothold for the idea that the name Jesus comes from the name Zeus, it quickly evaporates into thin air. All right, so two, 
This is the second uh, claim. SOS, SEUS, and SUS means Zeus. According to some, SOS, SEUS, and SUS at the end of a at the end of a name means Zeus. Supposedly, J.C.J. Metford claimed this in Dictionary of Christian Lore and Legend. Now, I say supposedly because uh, I did not verify this myself. Um, I have, n I don't think I've ever heard of J.C.J. Metford before, um, but he very well could have said that S.O.S., S.E.U.S., and S.U.S. at the end of a name means Zeus. So. If you wanted to look that up yourself, go ahead. Here's the information. Um, I don't think it's necessary for this video. First of all, if this were true, why wouldn't it be in most common dictionaries for everyone to learn? Isn't this a groundbreaking discovery? Why would the Bible dictionaries, commentaries, and other books written by highly intelligent individuals not say anything about it? The only proponents, the only thing proponents of these ideas can say is that it's a conspiracy. But even conspiracies have to be within the realms of logic and fact to be true, right? If so, let's examine things closer. SOS, SEUS, and SUS are not in Jesus's name. Now, you might say, but well, wait a minute, SUS, SUS. That's English. I'm talking about Greek. Okay, they say that the claim is that Jesus means something Zeus. And Zeus is a Greek god. So it makes sense if we go back to the Greek and figure out how uh, Jesus was spelled and sounded in Greek. Right? Okay, so as I said above, Jesus is spelled Iesus in Greek. This is the... Greek characters without any accent marks or breathing marks, just the letters themselves. There is no SOS, SEUS, or SUS in EASUS. You can compare SOS compared to this. These are English characters, English characters. There is no SOS, SEUS, or SUS in this name at all. If you watch closely enough, you'll see proponents of the Jesus Zeus name idea breeze right over this problem is if they can't see it even though it's right in front of their face. The fact is, even if these letter combinations had something to do with the name Zeus, they have nothing to do with Jesus' name. You can see for yourself. Nothing. They're not even in there. Maybe if you get rid of one of the letters, but <laughs> this is the way that it is. You can't get rid of one of the letters to make it fit what you think that it should be. And if you have to, then you're wrong. So now we know that Jesus' name isn't connected to the name Zeus. But what about those letter combinations? Do they have something to do with the name Zeus? So even if, uh, or even though Jesus in Greek has nothing to do with SOS, SEUS, or SUS, what if SOS, SEUS, or and SUS do mean Zeus? Do they? Word endings. Word endings OS. Let's look at the word isos, which is a Greek adjective that means equal. Does it have something to do with Zeus because it has the SOS letter combination in it? Now let's examine this word, isos. In English characters is I-S-O-S. So it therefore contains SOS at the end of the word. Now, obviously, this isn't a name, but um, I'm still making my point. Contains SOS. Does that have something to do with Zeus? No. The words ESOS and PONOS are similar. In which way are they similar? They both end in OS. See? They both have the word ending OS. The truth is, most of the time when you see a word that ends in SOS, what you're really seeing is a Greek root that ends in S and the word ending OS. So, ESOS is composed of its root IS. 
and its word ending OS, which form ESOS. IS plus OS equals ISOS. So this is the word ending OS. This is the root of the word ESOS, which is IS. Now you can tell this when you when you know Greek and you look at the words because the word ending will change, which is another thing I'm going to bring up later on in this video. It is misleading to say that SOS at the end of a word means something. S just happens to be the end of some word roots, and OS is a common word ending. Word endings, S. Next, let's look at the name Theseus, a mythical Athenian prince that killed a minotaur. Does Theseus's name have something to do with Zeus because it has the S-E-U-S -E letter combination in it? If you look up here, S-E-U-S -E in Theseus. And uh, Theseus, um, compared to Esos, is actually a name. Okay. No. The words Theseus and Aspis, or in Greek it would be pronounced Thesefs and Aspis, uh, an asp, aspis being an asp, which is a snake, it's a poisonous snake, um, are similar. So the words thesefs and aspis are similar. In which way are they similar? How are they similar? They both have the word ending s. S. Now, I want you to notice that I'm using word ending as a kind of a technical term, though it's not really um, the normal word that you would use, but I am using it as a technical term. I mean something very specific. When I say word ending, I'm contrasting the word ending with the word root. The word root is uh, the, the word itself. The word ending is the ending that's added on to the root. Okay, so I'm contrasting um, the word root with the word ending, even though this isn't really the technical term that you'd use. The truth is, when you see a word that ends in S-E-U-S, -E what you're really seeing is a Greek root that ends in S-E-U and the word ending S. So, Theseus is composed of its root, T-H-E-S-E-U, and its word ending S, which form Thesefs. T H E S E U plus S equals T H E S E U S. It is misleading to say that S E U S at the end of a word means something. S E U just happens to be the end of some word roots, and S is another word ending, though less common than O S. And I want to. Uh, make sure that something else is clear because it's because basically my point is is they say s-e-u-s at the end of a word or at the end of a name means zeus right except when you know greek and you look at the word you will see that s is the word ending this is the root so this is completely is a separate entity than this they are saying that these uh four letters means something but they can't mean anything because this is one uh complete full object or word it's a root this is a word ending this is completely separate from the rest completely separate same with up above with um os in this example esos um this is the root which is completely separate from the word ending. And this word ending, like I said, is a common word ending. You can see it in this word as well. Same ending, different root. So to say that SOS in this word means Zeus is misleading because OS is separate from IS. They're, they're splitting it here when really it's split here. So that's, that's my point. Word endings, US. Now notice I crossed this out. Finally, let's look at the English word Ephesus. Does Ephesus have something to do with Zeus because it has the S-U-S letter combination in it? If we look at Ephesus, we notice at the end of the word or name, it has S-U-S. So does it have something to do with Zeus? Your guess is probably no. Ephesus is a Latin version of the word. 
In Greek, Ephesus is called Ephesos. Notice the U is replaced with an O. Or actually, I'll show it here. E-P-H-E-S-U-S -E -E is the Latin version, and E-P-H-E-S-O-S -E is the Greek version. Now, obviously, um, in Greek, uh, it would be in Greek characters, but again, just so that you can compare them and you can see, I'm, it's called transliterating. I'm showing the Greek word in English letters. U-S isn't a Greek word ending, and neither is S-U-S. In fact, almost every Greek word that in English has U-S at the end actually has O-S at the end in Greek, unless it ends in E-U-S like Theseus. So, Ephesus in Greek is Ephesos. Ar Argus is Argos. Tarsus is Tarsefs or Tarsos, and so on. The truth is, U.S. is not a Greek word ending. Now you can see in these examples, Ephesus in English, it ends in U.S. However, that's a Latinized version of the Greek word, which the Greek word ends in OS. Argus also ends in US. However, that's a Latinized uh, version of the Greek word, which in Greek is ar, ar, um, Argos. Tarsus also ends in US. However, that's a Latinized version of two Greek words, two versions of, uh, you could say it one way or the other. Uh, one, uh, ver one way to say the word is Tarsefs, and another way to say it in Greek is tarsos, depending on how you want to say it. Kind of like synonyms, they mean the same thing, um, and you know you might use one way or the other, just depending on what you think of first, or maybe you know maybe this slight difference in meaning, one's a little bit harder to say, maybe that kind of thing. Word endings change in Greek. When someone says taris means bulldog because the letters us means dog. Their statement hangs on the idea that whenever you say that whenever you say that word, Taurus, you always say it the same way. So obviously, if this means something in the word, if this means something, tar, like so in this example, bull, and us, US, means dog, giving the word Taurus the meaning of bulldog, because you have bull and then dog, then that that uh, assumes to say that assumes that this always stays the same to always mean bull and this always stays the same to always mean dog right makes sense this is mostly true in english most of the time words stay the same in english there are times when words change though um, or different words are used So this is mostly true in English, but not so in Greek. Did you know that word endings change in Greek depending on how the word is used in the sentence? If I wanted to say that Jesus said something, I would say Iesus. Again, a Greek word transliterated into English characters or letters. Iesus is a subject. If I wanted to say that Jesus said something, I would say Iesus. If I wanted to say that someone said something to Jesus, I would say Iesun. Iesus is Jesus' name used as the subject, in Greek, obviously. Iesun is Jesus' name used as an object. Notice the difference. Iesus ends in an S. Iesun ends in an N. Now, um, in reality, uh, there is actually a contraction, I believe, uh, that's going on here that you cannot see. Um, there's actually an extra O, but with Greek, then the OU um, kind of swallows up the O and the S is only remaining. Same thing with this. Usually there'd be an extra O before the N, but the OU swallows up the O, um, and so there's only an N remaining. But that's, that's Greek. If you were to learn Greek, you'd learn that. So uh, it might look a little strange, but this this word Iesus actually ends in OS, and then the O is swallowed up by the OU, because it's that's the way that Greek words are contracted. Is, was, sos a word in Greek? 
According to Strong and Wilk, it was, but they don't say anything about the supposed god Zeus. Here's what Strong said. From a primary, sos, contraction for obsolete, saos, safe. Here's what Thayer's translation of Wilk's dictionary says. Sos, safe and sound. Now, this is strong. Uh, the definition comes from the word, from his definition of sozo, which you can look it up in Strong's Greek dictionary if you'd like to. Um, and he, in that definition of the word sozo, he mentions that it comes from a primary word sos. That primary word sos is a contraction of saos, and saos means safe. Now, remember, this is Greek. Uh, Thayer translated Wilkes Dictionary. So uh, I believe Wilk wrote his dictionary in Latin. Thayer translated it into English, and this is what it says in English. Same thing, just like Strong, uh, this information comes from the definition for sozo. He was saying that uh, sozo comes from the word sos, which, as he says, means safe and sound. So sos was a contracted form of saos, which meant safe. I don't believe this word exists in the Greek language anymore. We will continue right after this. Dinoglus.com or go-dine.com is still growing. From there, you can read one of the 8 plus topical guide articles. As the name implies, each topical guide article covers a specific topic. You can get data-oriented information in the form of equations and tables from the general research section. This section will continue to grow as I try to address different topics and issues. You can create an account, post comments, and use the forums. You can, of course, look at the storefront to see what products are available for purchase. The storefront links to the products available at the Donagolus store. I invite you to come and take a look at the website for yourself. We are back. Uh, Jesus means. Here are some claims concerning Jesus' name and the supposed compound words that end in SOS, SEUS, and SUS. Jesus, Greek, Iesus, means Hail Jesus. So they say. These are my references that say that. Jesus, Greek, Iesus, means Son of Zeus. This is my references that say that. Now, these references don't necessarily claim this themselves. They might just be saying that other people claim this. Dionysus, Greek, Dionysos, means son of Zeus. Ephesus, Greek, Ephesos, means daughter of Zeus. Tavru, uh, Taurus, sorry, <laughs> Taurus, Greek, Tavros, means bull of Zeus. Cronus, Greek, Kronos means father of Zeus. Those are the claims. I numbered them one through six. That way I could number my responses to each of these claims one through six so that you know what I'm responding to. Here's my response to those claims. One, which would be to this. The word that is usually used for hail or hello in Greek is hero. Now, uh, first I want to explain hail is an old English term meaning Hello. Hail also means, uh, but it's a different meaning or a different word. It It's spelled exactly the same. It sounds exactly the same. Hail also means hail that falls from the sky. They're not to be confused, obviously. Hail um, in Old English was a word that they used for hello. For example, in the well-known uh, phrase, hail Hitler. It's kind of like hello. It might have more meaning than that, but um, in the Bible, then uh, there's a few times I believe where it says uh, the New Testament specifically where it talks about hailing people, as in greeting them, saying hello. And the Greek word used for that, that is usually used for that, I don't know any other 
Greek word other than this uh, is hero. Um, now, if you were to look up hero in the Greek dictionary, it means uh, it means rejoice, but um, it was used uh, as a greeting like our hello, uh, kind of equivalent to good day. You in English we say good day or or um, good morning. They said rejoice. Uh, no form or part of the word hero is found in the name Jesus. You can compare it for yourself. English characters, but Greek word is not in there at all. Maybe the idea that Jesus is that Jesus means Hail Zeus comes from the Spanish name for Jesus, which is pronounced Jesus. And it actually seems kind of silly that people would think that. I can understand why people would think that. But for someone to be so strong about it and make YouTube videos about it, saying that that's true, if it's really all based off of a Spanish name, which, yes, Spanish is somewhat like Greek in some ways. It's also somewhat like Latin. But you have to go to the Greek to know what Greek is about. You have to go to Latin to know what Latin is about. You can't just look at an English word and say, oh, I know what you know the Hebrew meaning of the word is. You have to go to the language. So it seems kind of silly for anyone to come to the conclusion that Jesus means Hail Zeus because um, in Spanish you pronounce it Hey Zeus. But if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. And this is the best conclusion I know of um, of why they would say, why anyone would think that Jesus means Hail Zeus, unless they just threw a dart at a board to figure out what the meaning of it was. This is the best conclusion I can come to. Two which is to this Jesus means son of Zeus the word that always means the word that always means son in greek not to be confused with the sun in the sky is yos no form or part of the word yos is found in the name jesus now you might notice yos sounds sort of similar you yos to e but completely different this is the U or the Eos U sound uh, comes from two letters, Ypsilon Iota. The E sound in Iesus comes from one letter, Iota only. Completely different. Also, you'll notice uh, or you may notice that OS in this word is the word ending. This is the root. This is the root, I believe, in Iesus. This is the ending, because like I said, the O is swallowed up by the OU. So this is the original root, um, and it, you, it doesn't, it doesn't, Yos doesn't fit anywhere in Iesus at all. Just like Hero doesn't fit anywhere in Iesus. So three, which goes to uh, Dionysus, means son of Zeus. Now notice that um, the same person claims that Jesus means son of Zeus and Dionysus means son of Zeus might seem a little strange that they both mean son of Zeus even though they are both spelled completely differently. All right, so three. Though it is true that Theos is another form of the name Zeus in Greek. That's true. Uh, like I said, how words change. Well, Zeus is actually kind of a strange word. The whole root changes. It's like they had Zeus is one word and theos is another word and they were both used for the same god and maybe sometime along the line then they started using zeus for one um for the subject and uh theos for or actually theon for the uh object even though they're different words sort of like how um, some of our words they're actually originally different words but we use them as just different forms of the words we do the same thing in english um, in the video, they say that Dios is a Latin word. Now, uh, Dios is a Latin word, but it doesn't mean Zeus, not as far as I know. Now, I don't know Latin, but Dios is Greek. They're mixing it up with Latin, you know. All right, so uh, Nusos, the second half of the name, of the name Dionysus, uh, probably doesn't mean sun. As I said above, Eos was usually used for sun. According to Wilk, the word the verb nuso means to pierce, or perhaps strike through. Though nuso is the closest word in the dictionary I could find, I don't know if it has anything to do with the name Dionysus. So Dionysus is um, 
is probably a compound word, like they claim. That's That part is true, but the meaning of it is different than what they say. Uh, this is probably... This is probably uh, from Dios, which means Zeus, and this possibly, now don't forget, this is actually an O in Greek, um, so it'd be Dionysos. This is possibly Nuso, which uh, according to Wilk means to, to pierce or perhaps, or I say perhaps strike through. So maybe Zeus pierces or Zeus um strikes like uh, you know like a fatal blow like someone stabs someone else with a uh, spear through them that would be a fatal wound four which goes to um ephesus means daughter of zeus the greek word for daughter is to i it i know it doesn't look pretty in english characters kore means girl or little girl in greek neither to or Kore are seen in the name Ephesos. Greeks, uh, Strong says that Ephesos probably comes from a foreign origin, foreign to Greek. So again, Kore and Tugater and Kore are not seen in Ephesos at all. At all. Five, which uh, goes is an answer to this. Taurus means bull of Zeus. Taurus Tavros just means a bull. You can see this in the word Minotaur. Minos was the name of the king of Crete in a Greek myth. He tried to kill Theseus, another uh, Greek myth uh, character, with his Minotaur, Minotavros. Minotavros is a compound word, combining Minos, the name of the king, with Tavros, a bull. It might mean, Minotavros might mean uh, Minos's bull, so in other words, the bull that belongs to Minos, or Minos bull, uh, which would be possibly Minos as a bull, as if Minos transformed into uh, part bull, part human. Uh, in the story, or the myth, then uh, mi uh, the Minotaur was um, a part bull, part human. He had a bull's head, and yeah. Um, the word chronos, or chronos, means time, which is where the name of the pretend god Cronus comes from. Chronos, time. It has nothing to do with their claim that Cronus means father of Zeus. And wouldn't that be kind of convenient if Cronus meant father of Zeus? That meant everything revolves around Zeus, when supposedly he's supposed to be his father. That doesn't even make any sense Um even just looking at it in English, it's kind of hard to believe. Unless you believe that they know what they're talking about, and then you could be like, well, maybe it does. Well, enough about all of that. Let's talk about the name Jesus. Where did the name Jesus come from? To be honest, this isn't that hard of a question to answer, if we keep it simple. All we need is a good dictionary. However, if you want a good understanding of the issue, you have to deal with four languages, English, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. Here's what I understand happened with the name. First, a change occurred in the Hebrew language itself. Yehoshua, translated into English in the Bible as Joshua, was shortened to Yeshua, translated or transliterated into English in the Bible as Jeshua or Jeshua. Yeshua might be an Aramaic version of the name because it's found only in 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, and Nehemiah. And these are my examples. You can look them up yourself. You will see that it mentions someone named Jeshua. Whether it's considered Aramaic, modern Hebrew, I believe, or ancient Hebrew, it seems like it came into being later on.
So first of all, a change a change occurred in Hebrew itself. Yehoshua was shortened to Yeshua. Next, Yeshua was transliterated into Greek as Iesus, probably when Greek began to be the language of the world. Y became an I in the name Yeshua to Iesus. E became an E. SH became an S. U might have become OU and A might have been dropped. So Y became an I, E became an E. The SH in Hebrew is one letter and that became the letter S because there is no SH letter sound, it's just S. Uh, the U might have became, become the OU and that makes up the root EASU. The A might have been dropped So I said, see the description below the video, reference eight. So uh, if you look below my video in the description box, there are different references. Um, for example, this information came from reference three. Um, and if you go to reference eight, if you click on it and go to that video in that video's description box, reference eight, uh, the description box below reference eight, then uh, um, you will see um, a transliteration explanation or whatever he calls it and it will basically say the same thing I'm saying here um, and that's the reason why I decided to say that U became OU and A was dropped because I'm um, trusting what he said he sounds like he knows what he's talking about in that area so all of that came together forming Yeshua's Greek root Iesu when used as a subject Iesus when used as an object, Iesun. In Greek characters, Iesus. Now notice this is Greek characters. This is an accent mark here. This is a, uh, or not an accent. This is a breathing mark. This is an accent mark. So it does look a little bit different, but you can still see all the same characters. When the Bible was translated, was translated into Latin, Iesus became Iesus. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not really sure. Again, notice that U.S. is a Latin ending, not Greek. So, Iesus is the Greek version of Jesus. Iesus is the Latin version of Jesus. Notice that they took the O-U-S and changed it into a U-S because that is comfortable um, for the Romans, for people who speak Latin or spoke Latin. That's a Latin Latinization of the word or of the name Iesus. Just like Iesus is a Greek, Greekanized version of the Hebrew name Yeshua. Eventually, the I in Iesus or Iesus, Iesus, Iesus became a J, making the name Jesus. Compare Iesus with Jesus. The I became a J. That's how you get Jesus. Today, when an I begins a Greek name, it normally turns into a J in English. Or at least this is how it works with Hebrew names that come to us through Greek. This includes John, James, Joseph, Joshua, Jonah, and other names. Now, all of these names are Hebrew names originally, but they were translated from Hebrew, transliterated from Hebrew into Greek, and then transliterated from Greek into Latin, and then transliterated from Latin into English. And that's that. So um, to make sure that you actually are able to follow my main points, I wrote a summary because I was concerned that I was presenting too much information and kind of muddling or muddying my, uh, my main imp portrait that I was trying to paint. So I wrote this summary. The names Jesus and Zeus are spelled differently and pronounced differently in Greek and in English. The letter combinations SOS, SEUS, and SUS are not even in the name Jesus in Greek. OS and S are normal word endings in Greek. This means that SOS and SEUS at the end of a word have nothing to do with compound words in Greek. This is a misunderstanding of how Greek works. US is a Latin word ending, not Greek. The idea that SUS means Zeus is a misconception which comes from looking at Latinized Greek words. Greek word endings change depending on how the words are used in a sentence. For example, Ephesos becomes Epheson when used as an object. 
This proves that SOS, or any other letter combination, at the end of a word is not a word itself. S or uh, SOS. SOS is actually an ancient Greek word that means safe. Even if SOS at the end of a word meant something, it wouldn't mean Zeus. It's clear that people are completely misunderstanding the issue, mixing Latin up with Greek, and inventing new meanings for Greek words. The name Jesus, the name above all names, is not the, pro the profane name of a false god. It's a transliteration of a Hebrew name. Yehoshua became Yeshua, which transliterated into Greek as Iesus, which transliterated into Latin as Iesus, which became our modern Jesus. Conclusion. After looking at the evidence, there is absolutely no reason to believe that Jesus' name came from the name of the fake god Zeus. Jesus is a legitimate transliteration of the name Yeshua that came to us from Hebrew, through Greek, and then through Latin. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. I hope I hope it was informative. I hope it was um, easy to understand, even though there's a lot of information. Um, and if you like this kind of video, or you hope or you you think that uh, a video in the future I might make would be interesting, then please subscribe.